we're kicking off our inaugural CEO chat series. Um, here, we, what we do is we want to understand how you got to where you got to. Lah. So we'll spend the first 10-15 minutes trying to drill into your life. Okay? So tell us a bit about yourself. Tell us your background, how you got into this space, how you ended up with Prefields Asia College, and how, how you know, that, that spark triggered this whole you know, venture into startup. So you know, maybe start from a little bit you know, as a younger boy growing up, right? What did you do and how did you end up in the world of, of uh, academia? Okay. I was born in. <laughs> Just kidding. Uh, okay. As a youngster, I was always very much involved in tons of stuff. So, uh, in school, uh, you know, primary school, head prefect, head librarian, top to everything. Oh, wow. I always like to do everything. And then in when I got to secondary, actually, I got. We pressure ourselves so much with studying always to be, you know, the thing. I got more excited about extracurricular stuff. So I started joining a lot of the societies. Uh, I think I was in 16 societies and holding force in 14. And we would be doing the fundraising for canteen days. And, you know, so that, that's what excited us more. But we just do the enough studying and good enough to just make sure we can, we can progress along. Uh, and I found that enjoyable. So with the school was when I was about to decide what to study. Uh, uh, my dad was worried I was going to become a musician because I used to be a DJ and a musician in my younger days and I think he was a bit scared. But I don't want to go and do a business degree at the time. And of course, I being a Ceylon Tamil, Malaysian or Sri Lankan Tamil origin, we have four choices. Doctor, lawyer, engineer, accountant. Maybe if that we couldn't make, we could be a dentist or an architect. Instead of engineer, architect, or instead of uh, doctor, we can be a dentist. But there were these four professions. Everything else was not a profession. So I came back home one day, you know, at the time we were deciding, and I come back home and I see a few cars there. I tell them, uncles. My father had an intervention. All these people came, we sat down there, and they said, no, we understand you're going to study business. Uh, yes. Business, you don't need a degree. You know, anybody can do business. Uh, so do law. So I actually did a compromise. I said, I'll study law. And when I, I will do an MBA after that. So I'll finish faster. That's what we did. Uh, and honestly, having studied law, I find it's a brilliant degree. Because that's the degree that gave us that way to think, to look at problems, to analyze, you know, to analyze and look at problems from different angles. You always learn how to look things. You are better at decision making. It helps with communication. So I had no regrets there. But when I finished and came back, First thing I did was I was teaching. I was always teaching friends and whatever. And I set up the school. And I set up the college when I was 24. You set up that law school in uh, BSC yeah. at 24? Yeah. So that was my... I but, had... But what was the trigger? I mean, why... why be just because you wanted to do business? I wanted to go into business. And you didn't know what and else And so do. when I finished the CLP, I did well. So I was actually... Um, I'd finished, so I went to this college, and they didn't have the CLP course uh, at that time, the bar, the Malaysian bar. So I said, well, I can come and teach the course, and we do a profit sharing, 50-50. And we started, and actually for five months, they, ch they charged such a low fee, and for five months, what I made was 1,500 ringgit. Which was that, was, that was my share of the so-called profits uh, that were there. But after seeing the five months, but I still worked as hard as I could. So I would still go and teach them every day. I, would, I was supposed to teach them one or two. I taught them the other subjects. I saw the point, I took them to my house and sat at the dining table and started teaching these guys. And later said, okay, um, I, I, I know I can do this. So I saw an ad in the newspaper about uh, uh, a UK law school or whatever it is coming to visit. I told my dad, I want to set up this school. I had no money. Uh, so, and you're 24 years old and you want to set up a school. It's quite, you know, these people look, I had six months to start. So we started uh, with no funding. I had about some sand that my, you know, we had a piece of land and the sand was sold and whatever, it was about, I think it was total about 60,000 ringgit. That was the, the money we had, but you know, it renovated and all, it's very expensive. So we, it was, it was a leap of faith. Uh, fortunately, my dad sometimes listens to me, you know. Uh, so he said, fine, okay, you want to start, you start, and then we had to prove ourselves. In actual fact, when we started, we had nothing. It was a small 800 square foot room where, you know, one of the service officers, we started there and we spoke to people and actually we sounded like we were going to do a great job and what we had planned, the people actually come and signed up and paid while we got the premises ready, you know, that, that, at that point. Then the premises were ready and we had no funding and we got 
a couple of hundred uh, students. I, I remember the day before I said, open the, 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 the room. We only had a few people registered. And you know, Malaysians being Malaysians, two o'clock on Saturday, the class starts. A hundred old people come and register on that day. So our class, and I told them the night before, move the movable partition, put the room to the back. And suddenly, and who got them? My 12 students. My first batch, I had 12 students. They went around canvassing for me. He went all out for us. And it was that word of mouth. These 12 guys dragged people virtually to come into us. And everybody I had teaching was older than me. I mean, it, it was, you know, they were all my lecturers at uni. And you know, I pulled those guys in uh, to come in and teach. But uh, my wife was with me. And my wife and I, basically, we were clean toilets, do photocopying, everything. It was that uh, when we started. But you have to be like that when it's, your, when it's your own. And after we had got about 400 students or 300, we got them very fast, three to 400 students. We got actually funding. I mean, why, I'm not trying why? to advertise for MBank. So, so MBank gave what, us the funding. Oh, MBank gave you funding, wow. So M Finance, I got leasing from them. M Finance, I got leasing from them for my carpets and renovations and so on. Uh, after about three or four months of operation because we were paying from our student fees and then, you know, the cash flow side. What, so, what, yeah. what, what triggered these 400 students to, to be, be brave enough to join something? I mean, to be, to be especially education, right? I mean, parents are usually it's, it's, very careful about... There, yeah. there must be something special or, or, or they just, just because there was the gap in the market? No, because actually in the 80s, we were like a cowboy town, you know. The guys who were teaching had no degrees. There were all sorts of fellows who were just running around. It was, it was bad. And the problem with a lot of people, you don't go and do a business because you want to make money. You go into a business because you're passionate about it. So it, for me, being a teacher was something, you know, education is something, it, it, it's in my heart. It's in my wife, you know, we, we're all teachers. So when you go and do something because you like what you do, that passion can be felt. It gets harder when you get bigger and bigger and bigger, but people can feel your, your energy, you know, and, and that's, what, that's what's important, mm -hmm. you see. And people could feel it when they said, hey, these guys are, 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 are so, good. So you, you got this on the ground, and then how did it grow? I mean, what, what, what was okay. the scaling process? How, how did it? We grew relatively quickly. I mean, we had some challenges. One, I mean, even initially premises, I, we don't have like a, a, a whole day, so. There were challenges. We had regulatory challenges in, uh, with, the, with the writing bodies because of sometimes when, when the problem is we need, and I always say this, we need the regulators to understand how things work in the business. So when you have to have a business friendly environment, you see, you need regulation, but those in regulation should also understand the whole ecosystem and how things work. And sometimes while they think that they're doing the, 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 the right thing, uh, uh, it's because it's too literal. So in 1993, I'd wanted to expand. It was 91, 93. I bought one building uh, because the earlier place we had, the landlord wanted to increase the rent by more than double. He said, you all are doing very well. And we had a two-year tenancy. So, had, so all this we learn. So in future now, I have caps. My te if I have a tenancy, it's three plus three plus three. I have a cap of 15%, 20, you know, whatever. I've put in a cap, so they can't. First year, lesson for us, two years, Rental, more than 100% increase. Of course, I said, this is ridiculous. Uh, I quietly bought the building opposite. He did, they didn't even know. And overnight, we just moved across the road. But, you know, it, it is there. And then you say, okay, lesson for the future. Take note of this. Uh, 93, we expanded. So then I wanted to move to other courses, like accounting, business. We were thinking of expanding from what we had. We applied for licensing. When we applied for licensing, in 1993, so the, I got a letter back from the, the authority yes, saying, we can't give you the license because you don't have enough uh, uh, space. You have this building, you have 1,500 students now, 1,400. This building is only so many floors, you need more space. And so I said, fine. But one thing I'll try and tell them is, we were operating seven days a week. And our 1,000 odd, odd students are split to full-time, daytime, evening, and weekend. They are never there at the same time. The weekend students will come Saturday, Sunday, the working adults, weekday. So we, we were maximizing the space, and they're all not there at the same time. But they said, no, you need space. So June, we bought a building or July. Within a few months, we bought a second building because they said, you need the building. So I invested, uh, I think it was three something million, four million, bought another building, spent about a million renovating the building, did a lot of the work ourselves, going there, even cleaning, taking. I mean, that's how we do things. Did everything. 
and then applied, got all the approval, Bandaraya, everything, all the authorities got all the approval. Now went back to them and said, here we've got the building and we're waiting. And I waited for three months, five months, ten months, more than ten months, and went back and saw the same person. And I said, you know, you rejected on the basis we do not have this approval. I mean, we don't have the space. Now we've got the space. Can we revisit? You know, the answer given was, I understand, Mr. Raja. We told you if you don't have the building, we can't give you the approval. But it does not mean that because you've got the building, we must give you the approval. <laughs> so I'm like, okay. <laughs> we've now spent money. I've got an empty building. We're paying monthly uh, loans. You know, I mean, a loan to a bank, and the building's empty. So I said, so I said, what's happening? She said, now it's 1995. In 93, we were issuing licenses. In 95, we are going after people who offended the law. Which colleges have offended the law? So I said, okay, but I didn't offend the law. <laughs> so why not you give me these licenses as a means to reward people rather than punishing the offenders? You give the license, then you can tell people we have given him the license because he followed. No, 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 you don't understand. 93, issued license. 95, there's a moratorium going after offenders. We can only do one thing at a time. Either issue licenses or go after offenders. You can't expect us to do two things. And at this point, I'm thinking like, okay, they say you can't multitask at the same time. The, you know, for us to do brain science, I multitask, but well, maybe you could do it today. You know, I, was, I was like, this is crazy. After we spent millions of dollars based on a letter, you now tell me we can't give you the license, and that was it. So in 95, I actually sold the school to a listed company. I, I, you know, a listed company at that time, I sold it because they would have the connections, and I was a bit fed up. We sold it. The uh, whole thing, uh, the whole locks of error? Seventy percent. I sold. They became the majority shareholder. I had a small minority uh, uh, stake left in it. I come back in the weekends, but but it was that because I was saying there, I was no way I was going to get the license, and we are serious education uh, provide you know uh, people who want to teach, and that was it. So I sold it uh, to a listed company, and then started the next phase of a rather interesting uh, odd journey. I went into IT during the 96, 97, because I sold it, I got 10 million ringgit in 95, and I was only about 20 something years old. Uh, and 10 million ringgit in 95 is a lot of money. Uh, um, and I went into IT, and on a big scale, on a, on a very interesting scale, uh, we set up a thing called Corporate Network, which was the biggest business information database in Asia. I worked with Oracle, we got the Oracle best product of the, the year. I worked with Bloomberg, Reuters, Dow Jones, I mean, the, the, a whole bunch of guys. So completely out of... Uh, completely out of education. We, did, we actually are the ones who put the star online. I know you're the star. We put the star online then. The morning paper will come out and then the afternoon. We set up this uh, IT venture. We had another company doing solutions uh, for telecoms and, you know, uh, uh, these kind of, I mean, big solutions using art artificial intelligence and, you and know, and payment systems. And how did you get into that? You bought companies or you... Uh, no, you we set it up. Scratch. I found friends of mine who were interested and then we set it up. We actually opened a computer superstore. At that time, that thing called CompAsia. We brought the biggest franchise and I put a phone shop in it saying phones and computers would merge. The phone shop was called Walk. The computer shop was called CompAsia. And we said these things would converge. Your phone was going to become a computer. This was long before the days of Apple. Uh, we had an IT training center. We had Hot Java, which was the a club. Morning, you watch Bloomberg, 30 screens on TV. At night, it's a, like a party place, like, you know, dinner, whatever. And then we had the first MTV Asia Awards there. And we had tons of these entities, IT training, IT solutions, a multimedia company, an ad company. We did Web Asia, which was doing websites. Uh, we did some of the marketing for the Commonwealth Games. So we had all of this, and everybody was super excited. We had all the listed companies knocking on our door. We want to buy a stake. I had one uh, GLC that was looking at a 150 million investment for 51%. And our turnover in the first year was about 70 million. It was like, you know, we were, we were literally uh, 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 causing a lot of havoc. A lot of the IT guys, or traditional guys were looking and saying, what are these guys trying to do? And this was the dot com, when Amazon started, when Yahoo started. We got a bit excited, didn't look at things. The currency crisis came. The ringgit fell from 250 to 6 plus. We can't blame that. We never hedged. And all of a sudden, we were buying equipment for 28 million in the US. With all our staff, our costs, our things, sell it for 40 million. The cost became 60 million. That's like one example. 
I, other companies. We had 39 jobs to do, websites, multimedia. We were doing things like if you had a development and you wanted to see this development, uh, say, uh, uh, Hong Kong, we put it on CD. We do 3D walkthroughs, so you could actually walk through, see you know, the kind of apartment. That we were doing things which were way ahead. That was CN Interactive, that company. Web Asia was the web, you know, the web design. Uh, corporate network was this. So all this, all this. Everything collapsed on a 12-day. We lost that money. I hung around for a year, switched to do things. But we didn't have the ecosystem then, because in Am UK, US, Amazon lost money for 10, 20 years. Yahoo lost money for years. But our guys were here like. You've got to make money. Then came the issue with a contract, which was a huge contract. And unfortunately, huge contract. Then they said, we can't give it to you because you're not a Bumiputra company. So go find the Bumiputra to front the company. So we had to run around doing stupid things uh, unnecessarily. Then the company asked. So it, I'm very upfront because I've got partners from everywhere. We work with everybody. But this was the ecosystem of how we were looking at it. And we actually got a good, nice whacking. Uh, lost everything, uh, but the idea is to maintain your sanity. Uh, you know, whatever it is, you maintain your sanity. So, so how, how yeah. did you pick yourself up and how did PAC come back into uh, it? Actually, pick yourself up is uh, get a good spouse. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so I, 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 I have a brilliant spouse. I mean, so when I am down, she will pull me up. When she's down, then, you know. I mean, between that, so you I lost completely wiped out. Yeah, I was driving at that time because I sold the thing for ten million. I was driving a Rolls Royce, Silver Spirit. Okay, my car was taken. Uh, then I, I actually got it back after that. But whatever it is, I was driving. I then had to borrow my father-in-law's Proton Saga. Uh, I had a sports Merc and this one. I bought my dad a Merc. You know, I mean, whatever it is, we just paid. You know, I bought my father-in-law a car. I bought my my dad a car. I bought us a car. Walked in, but. Uh, the thing about the banks, I mean, no offense to M-Bank, <laughs> is the... They give you your lease. They, well, yeah, when it's raining, they take umbrella away. La. <laughs> no, no offense. When, you see, we were supposed to pay the money over time. You can't pay for three months because our customers weren't paying us. With some of the GLC customers, we had to go there and beg them for payment, you know. You can't even call them and say, hey, pay us, because the money is it's a huge amount. You know, then we factor the invoices, and then you lose your margin. So, so, so this, this was quite a good, uh, I mean, it was an early lesson for you. You were relatively young still, right? Still, uh, uh, yeah. Still, still in your 20s. Yeah, now I'm um, about 30. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm 50 this year. I, I don't hide my age. So, so, so what happened? I mean, how did you So how what did happened you, was, how, we how lost it. How did you it. get back? Okay, so how did you for get back? For a year, I tried to push uh, uh, the idea. I think I was on the speed dial of every single bank in town and probably every single bank's lawyer. We had a whole bunch of things. There's no point getting excited. So I'm actually relatively calm. So we call, okay, we look at it. Uh, and they generally treated us well. Because, you know, I go and tell them, it's not I don't want. Actually, one of the banks was the one most astounded. They brought a legal action. They won the action. But I paid the amount. I'm sorry, they lost the action. And I paid the amount. And they were like, we lost the case. There were two matters. They won on the small one and lost on the big one, which was the, the, the bigger. I paid them the amount. So they looked at me and said, so I said, I negotiated and paid. They said, why are you paying the amount? You, I mean, you, this one. I said, no, we borrowed the money. If, I don't deny that. It's just, I didn't expect us to lose the currency, the ringgit to fall like that and to lose this kind of money. So we'll pay you. It's just that we couldn't do it in the three months or six months that you wanted those six months payments and the two, three years. We had to find our footing. So to me, Whatever happens, it's an idea of, there's no point sitting down and worrying about the past or what happened or whatever. I'm always overthinking, I always look ahead. That's what my wife will say. See, my wife's always worried about, because she remembers better. I sometimes, you know, I look ahead. I don't look behind. Uh, so that's why it's a good balance, you know. So in, in 95, was 96, 97, I still hung on. We were still trying to do things. I was still investing money. We had so many people saying, hey, this is really good. Hang on. So after a while, the school wasn't doing well under the new ownership. They had their own issues. They were losing money from the time they bought it. And uh, I was still doing some teaching. Then 2002, we had a run-in with the ministry. The ministry wanted to close the school down. 
uh, again, at that time I was not the owner. The owners were the new owners. And it was quite silly because they went around to 40 schools or 30 schools, a lot of universities under some ops, and they wanted to shut it down. Of course, they went to everybody. I'm quite annoying. Uh. So when they came to us, I said, I was not the, the owner, but uh, I had a small stake, but I was still ha helping out. So I said, if you close this down, I'll sue you. Uh, I will sue. And then I actually went and showed them the law, which they had not read. And after they realized the mistake, they actually had to call us in and give us a fresh new license. But those guys were not keen, so they said, we'll close down, we're not interested in education. So I told them, don't close down, I set it up, I'll buy it back. But no money. <laughs> so I said, I'll pay you monthly over, I sold it for 10, I got it back for three. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, and I had no money, so they put an interest element, so I paid slowly. 100,000 a month, and bear in mind, uh, from 1996-97 to 2007, I was paying between the banks and all these other things, every month, at some point earlier, 50,000, 100,000, then 200, then 300, and it just went on. But by 2007, we had cleared off everything, and all of a sudden, I had a lot of spare cash. Suddenly, we had cash flow, because we were working, okay, 300,000 to pay this, 200,000, this month, and I was looking at myself, I was like, this is an apartment a month, you know, 200,000, you can buy an apartment, and these were unsecured loans. Unsecured financing, you know, uh, 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 based on business. So I said 200, 200, 200 going off. Uh, same thing, 2003, I said I'll buy back the school. They wanted to close it. I said don't close. I'll buy it, okay, and I'll pay you. You close, you can get nothing. So I went to the ministry, showed them what the thing was. They looked at it. They realized the, there was an error. AG Chambers told them, give them a new license. So, so what happened? <coughs> how, how did the big growth come in? So you had the school? 2001, I had already, 97, no, I mean, 98. After, after you bought the school back, how, you know, what, how was the, the quantum growth? That okay, what happened was, by 2007, I'd finished paying everybody else, mm -hmm. including bought back the school fully. And uh, I had learned a lot of things in the 90s, although, you see, the, the thing in life is this, you shouldn't be afraid to fail. You shouldn't want to fail, like, you can avoid it, but you shouldn't be afraid to fail. And that is one of the things we don't teach our students, we don't teach our children sometimes that go out there and fail. Because the, the thing is this, it is to learn from the failure. It's not to not, to, you know, don't fail. You can't tell people not to fail. But the question is to get those lessons from that failure. So 2007 comes in. I had set up in the 90s IT company, web design company, multimedia company, stores. We were learning things. So come now, fast forward, own media company. We do all our own advertising. What you see on TV, what you see on cinema, what you see on billboards, own company. I'm technically the creative director. Own property company. Own publications company. No other school has an ecosystem of this sort. Everyone else is, I'm in education. But there were lessons we learned from then which makes me and us very unpredictable because most of them, we also don't know what we're going to do. I will never take a competitor on head on. I will outthink him. I will be more creative. I don't even look at we are competitors. I don't even learn from our industry. I never look. Somebody will say, oh, you know, this college, I don't want to see. It. They'll say, oh, you know, you know this. And don't, please don't bring it to me. It will limit my thinking. So I'm looking outside. I'm looking at Google. I'm looking at Apple. I'm looking at what the leaders in different fields are doing. That is where we learn. We take, this is interesting, can we apply? And there are things we are doing that are, are very new, even for foreign, uh, uh, you know, American so, institutions so and why, things. So why, what, what, what's so, what's so important about the advertising campaign? I mean, this BAC thing. Uh. It's not advertising. Actually, advertising is just a small part of it. Okay. Because in actual fact, it's an ecosystem. I give you an example. When we set 2007 and then we moved. Then we set up our new place. When the kids came to sign up now in PJ, because you know from small we had to grow to where we are, they get a gym that's like 18, whatever, 12, 18,000 square feet. Swimming pool, whatever, you know, it's, a, it's huge. They get free kickboxing classes, yoga classes, swimming classes, fencing classes, hip hop classes. It's all there, Zumba, everything is there. If they want to do it. Now people are saying, why are you teaching kids fencing? 
we, we call it Monster Fate. We have Rock Academy, which is a music school. They get free guitar, drums, keyboard, vocals, piano, how to spin and be a DJ when you sign up for a law degree. <laughs> you know, people think, why? Because to me, I want the students to think bigger. We have a coding school, Asia Developer Academy. We teach coding. We have an accelerator program now. We've just set up I4 Academy, machine learning, robotics. I'm sitting now on the National Transformation Plan. Actually, the government, I mean, they've invited me. I, I, I got invited with the government. I'm actually the only education person now sitting and looking at jobs for the future, for education, jobs, and careers. Uh, for the Indian blueprint, when they want to do entrepreneurship and this thing, they asked me to come in. Uh, I'm sitting now on various different government, you know, having our meeting, because while I have a big mouth, sometimes people think, and I will say what I feel, I mean well. Because for me, this country is important. I mean, it's home. So mm. we want the best for everybody. I mean, so, I mean, it's very unique in, a, in some instance, but to see a small college or university to some extent go so aggressively you know, in terms of the, the marketing. Okay, the, why? Well, eh? Why? Why? I mean, okay, why? why, me why how did that whole thing trigger that whole Let thing? me explain. The question is this uh, often, I mean, I, okay, I give lectures on branding, uh, which is, you know, to me, if you want to go and buy something today, a computer, what would you buy? Top of mind presents. Apple. 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 Okay. You want to get a phone? Top of mind presents. Samsung. Samsung. Apple. Okay. You want to buy? Now, these things are there. Whatever it is, the idea is to get top of mind presents. Mm -hmm. If you don't brand, everything is a commodity. Uh, I also sit in the you know the Indian Entrepreneurs Awards as a judge. I'm the chief. And I see all these guys coming in with business, and none of them want to invest in branding. Mm. If, you are, if you, people can't recognize you, you are a commodity. You might as well put bags of sugar, 10 bags, just put sugar there and say, pick mine. Nobody will know who you are. So the idea is this. It is not that, oh, we want to just advertise. That's not it. You have to deliver a superior product. You have to deliver a good product mm. and you have to work hard. I mean, perfection is, you know, it's hard. we work as hard as we can to get a product that can satisfy most of our customers. And, you know, and we do the best we can. Now, once that is there and your customer can see that, the question is, he will go and tell other people. And that's where we get most of our students are actually from current students. I've had parents who I've taught and then their kids have come in. I told them I'm not waiting for their grandkids. <laughs> You know, <laughs> that one day I was actually walked into the office. There were three tables where people were being counselled, and all three tables, one I thought the uncle, the other two I thought the parents. You know, uh, and they said, oh, I was here in 1991. Or I was here in 1992. You taught me. And some parents, the kids, they don't believe it. But he looks younger than you because they did law part-time. So they were 50 when they started or whatever. But, you know, it, it is, it's that kind of thing. So to me, branding is important. Apple. What Coca-Cola, for example, okay, if you don't mind, I digress yeah, to sure, business sure. lessons. Coca-Cola as a brand. I read an article, and this is years ago, that if you burned every Coca Coke manufacturing company, everything, everything burned down to the ground, and there wasn't anything, and they just had that logo, they could walk to a bank and get 80 billion and get dollars of funding. That's how strong that Coke brand is. In the earlier years, it's quite funny. We'll call people up, hello, we've been in exhibition, they come, look, Brickfields, you all are where? In England. You're like, Brickfield, uh, you don't care, Brickfield. Brickfield, you call people up, uh, hello, Brickfield. You're local, uh, not in England. Uh, Brickfield sounds like an English name. <laughs> okay, of course, you call people Tun Samandan College. I mean, uh, uh, Kunjali is a very good friend of mine, you know. But we, it was called Brickfields, you know, then Jalan Tun Samandan, you see. So they don't even know where Brickfields is. Now we call, hello, I'm from Brickfields. You mean BAC? I'm like, well, now they're correcting me. I tell people I work at Brickfield Asia College. They have now decided to rename us after a website, BAC. So they'll tell me, you mean BAC? I said, yeah, I, I, I'm the one who named it, but yeah, BAC. <laughs> we are now known as BAC. Uh, it's Peter, but you need to build your brand. Whatever business you are in, uh, you know, people say, oh, get some Colgate. You know, you know this. Uh, get me some Colgate. But, but Raja, get I mean, Kleenex. A lot of SMEs will say it's um, complex because if I throw money and I don't get that return, um, because again, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a struggle, you see. Okay, I'll give you a simple example. Huh? Uh, I don't know, I don't know, recording, not recording. I bought the school back for three million, right? I'm now in 20 year businesses. We've increased the value of the school 200 times in the last 10 years. It's more than 200 times worth what, 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 what it is. And I'm, I'm, I'm talking about Winola because of uh, uh, valuations and so on, okay? 
And I would say, if people didn't know who I was, we didn't have a clear logo, we didn't have a clear branding plan, mm -hmm. we didn't have a clear uh, 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 you know, path on mm -hmm. these things, we won't be there. Okay. So, so just do it. Lah. I mean, it's, it's a critical you thing for You need to SMEs, brand. Uh. I'm not, you don't need to throw money. Because people see us all over the place, they think the amount that they think we spend is nowhere near what we spend. Because you know why? I have my own media company. So what will cost you one million will cost me far less. What will cost 10 million will cost me far less. Mm -hmm. And we, we, we bulk buy. You need some really, you must be bold. So we go, others will go and say, I want to advertise this and I'll pick this. I'll go and say, okay, I've actually gone to billboard companies and said, okay, what's your whole inventory? They'll say, we hold this. What to buy your entire inventory? Just give me a figure. So it'd be maybe a couple of million or whatever, but I'll just say, fine, we'll take it. I like the bots, we'll take it. So we have everything. Then I'll use it for all sorts of things. But you need to be able to make bold decisions. And because we are run, we are very much an entrepreneur type company. General companies will not be able to do this. Okay. My, my final question, and then I'll give you some time to talk, is you know, you started a lot of startups, right? So you you it wasn't a, it wasn't very, I mean it's it's focused on BSE and after that you started you know at Unish. I mean there's so many you invested in and you hold so many so many different org, uh, startup organizations. Yeah. Uh, why uh, why that, that is that I mean because people will say that's a you know your focus. Okay, is la, we must away, understand you know. one thing. I was there for the first one twenty years ago, so that thing of being a little bit gatal is still <laughs> people come up to us. I mean we were there. We were there for the first ride. Uh, Edu Nation. Okay, simple simple thing. Uh, while we're talking about startups, yes, we're involved in a lot of startups. I mentor a lot of young kids who are setting up their business. I am actually trying to help so that maybe I can help for my mistakes. Maybe they can, you know, the, uh, a, uh, they say like, a smart person learns from his own mistakes, a wise person learns from other people's mistakes. So I'm hoping other people can learn from my mistakes. Lah, you know, so we do go out and, and, and help a lot of organizations and share with them and say, hey, you know, look at currency, look at this, look at that. But the Make It Right movement and education is one. Some years ago, they came and said they wanted to set up a free education platform, like the Khan Academy in Malaysia. Honestly, this some years ago, four or five years ago, we also were just growing out. Uh, they had seen so many big listed companies, big companies run around all over the place saying they wanted 500,000, a few hundred thousand to start, couldn't get anywhere. They came and saw me, two friends of mine said, go see him because he used to be 90 in the 90s. He, although he's a law person, he will understand. I sat down, I said, we want to do this for education. The guy put up a PowerPoint print, I took me 10 minutes to say, yes, we are in. He couldn't believe it. But I said, I cannot give you 500,000 in one go, 50,000 a month over 10 months. And we find, we will do the, the we will advise and we start together. Uh, now I've given 7 million ringgit uh, uh, into this. We have 100,000 students using it, uh, school kids. We've got from standard one up to form five, free online tuition. We are now doing it in Mandarin and Tamil in addition to Bahasa and English. We now move one step further we were trying to get work with the authorities, there were some challenges. So now I went and saw the Minister for Education and said, I've got version two, free ebooks for all Malaysians, physics, chemistry, biology, it's all free ebooks. And we'll have specific portals because we now have seven to 17 year olds on one portal. So they said, what is it going to cost us? I said, nothing, I'll fund it. We will fund it, public private partnership. You just give access to people, we will pay for everything. Uh, they said, yeah, we've never had this kind of thing before. <laughs> so we funded it. Minister came, they launched it. And I said, we will teach your teachers how to use technology to teach. We will help. They are doing initiatives. We will help. November is coming to actually launch uh, a thing whereby 350 teachers are coming in. And then we're getting it recorded. And then all others. So we've thought about 1,000 over teachers. But where I spent, I've got 20 over companies we run. Uh, I've got a CEO or GM running each one. Rickfield Asia College is one. Actually, nowadays I'm normally managing director of BSE Education Group, but everybody knows me as Rickfield Asia College. Uh, we've acquired uh, recently an interest, a majority interest in ICT, the oldest advertising and branding uh, school in Malaysia, 46 years old. Two, three months ago, we bought an online university. Uh, but while we have all these media, all of this, my real passion is what we started about a year plus ago, it used to be called BSE Gives Back, the Make It Right movement. We work with 80 different NGOs, helping women, disadvantaged women, children, the special needs community, and we run 200 charity events a year, mm. uh, which is where we're going. So, you know? so Raja, just, just to close out, if you were to give you know, a, bu a bunch of SME owners here and also those watching um, uh, online, um, if you were to give one piece of advice for owners who are trying to scale their business, who are trying to grow their business, 
you know, they, they were probably in your position, you know, in 2003, um, when you first brought back the college, and, and, and they're trying to say, how can I grow, and I double, triple, 10 times, or 200 times in your case? You know, what advice would you impart to them? Just a short, um, okay. most uh, important thing that they need to think about. Okay, for me, now, even more important, while you want to scale up, is try to do it organically. You know, when, when one of the things I did, which was crazy in the 90s, was coming and setting up something so huge, and all of a sudden I had 500 staff, my turnover, my payment, my salaries were more than a million a month, you know, and, and we grew. So I advise people, unless you, you can have one or two, if you're a really strong base, keep that base, play with a little bit of money, especially now in the startup field. In the startup field now, there's so many opportunities. People come and knock on my door every day. I do pray. Some ways, unless it's, it's like a hobby. But uh, I don't gamble. But I think sometimes when you're looking at these new things, you must look at, this is money I'm prepared to lose. When you're doing a business, if you find something you're passionate about, the money will come. Because people will sense your energy and you just keep your knocking there. Grow organically. That means it's better to grow from one shop to two shops to four shops than to go from one shop to 30 shops. Because then you will learn quite hard, that's right. But the key thing to do, if I, I got one, I mean, they said one lesson to leave. Huh? My lesson is actually this, the only thing I can tell you is this, be relevant. It's all about relevance. I give you an example. The world is moving faster than ever. In college, we are doing very well. I mean, we are doing well as a school and this thing. But I am scared because disruption is coming. And I'm not the only one scared. Everybody is out who is doing well, ask her. So we work like a startup. We have enough, you know, I mean, we are enough, we are going to be done, but we are work like a startup. So in the sense that we move fast, we think fast on our feet, and we move, we make decisions. Why I say be relevant is this, eh? countries have become irrelevant. The Egyptian Empire, the Roman Empire, and even for that matter, I mean, I, even close to the British Empire, no longer the, the, what they were before, okay? Companies have become irrelevant. Kodak, 95% market share just because they had digital firm. Once you are doing well, you think, ah, I don't have to, I'm doing well. I don't have to bother. Where? 95% market share to a 90% drop in their share value. And bust, liquidated. Blockbuster video, the biggest video chain in America and the world. When Netflix came up initially, Netflix wanted to see them for funding. But they were like, we got thousands of stores, who are you? They didn't want to be. If they had invested 10, 20%, they be laughing now. Instead, within one to two years, Blockbuster closed down. Nokia. Nokia didn't do anything wrong. The phones were there. We all were using Nokia phones. But when Apple came in, they didn't see the threat. So to me, that's what affected them. And what we have to see as, as, as people, we run a law school. People think like, oh, everybody goes around saying like, lawyers, do we not? You know, they'll send out this WhatsApp. And actually, people love to send me this WhatsApp. We don't need lawyers. We don't need accountants. <laughs> I'm like, why are you sending this to me? You know? But what they don't realize is I have a coding school. I have an industry 4.0. And what they don't realize is this. It's not that we don't need lawyers. The lawyers need to change to be relevant. Because we're going to need law more than ever. I give you simple examples. When you, you look at the gig economy, people are going to now just, I work two days. I drive Grab or Uber for one day, I work part-time as an MC on another day, I don't have a job. What happens to things like EPF, SOCSO? How are the authorities going to look at that? Autonomous vehicles, cars driving themselves, accident happens, who's liable? Mercedes, Tesla, the, the owner of the car, the manufacturer, you know, where, where are you going to go? Google or whatever it is that's, you know, that is uh, controlling the car? You look at social media, the amount of nonsense that is said on social media about you know, attacking this, attacking that, tons of defamation cases there. You have a job. And as a matter of fact now, what will happen is this. In, 19, in the 19th century, there were 90% of Americans were farmers. Now, 2% are farmers. Why? Because tractors are there. When, when online reports came in, where you could search online, before that, lawyers had to go to the book, read slowly. Now online, you can use these databases, you find faster. But, so now you can focus on higher level th things. So one of the things I'm doing is I'm, you know, with the government right, on the future of work, I'm looking at 30, 30 years from now. So I'm saying, well, you might say 60% of the jobs that are, are there now will not exist. 60% of the jobs are jobs that don't exist today. You've got Oxford, Professor Harvard, all, so many guys are all over the place predicting all sorts of things. And honestly, I want to ask you, Airbnb, 2009, did anybody predict it? 
that guys who don't own a single piece of real estate will be the biggest uh, accommodation company. Uber, the most valuable startup, 70 billion in 2009. Can you predict two guys standing in the rain looking for a cab would invent a $70 billion company? None of us can predict. But what we've got to do is, as an organization, don't stay within your field. That's why I tell my students right now, you know, this, this coming January, the business degree holders, the law, I tell them, you pay, a, you pay me a small sum, you can attend 100 courses. You can attend machine learning, you can attend autonomous robots, you can, while you're doing your law degree, while you're doing your accounting degree, pick up finance, pick up this. But I will make all the classes available. You guys just have to turn up and learn. And that is where the banks, even the banks, now you've got Bitcoin coming in. Banks are worried. On one hand, one group will say Bitcoin is a Ponzi scheme. On the other hand, there are people backing and, and Bitcoin, cryptocurrency is there. I actually have a, you know, so you cannot discount things. Nobody thought, no taxi driver thought his neighbor will now be competing with him driving a taxi. <laughs> you know, so the competition, for me, I always say, my I'm not worried about my industry, guys, in the education industry. Because honestly, it's not going to come from there. Because those are doing, everybody is complacent. I'm making 5 million profit, I'm making 1 million profit, I'm making 20 million, I'm making 30 million. Why did Facebook buy WhatsApp? Why did Facebook buy Mark Zuckerberg? Why did he buy Instagram? Because he's also scared. Because wh who was there before him? Friendster. Friendster was there. Then Facebook came, Friendster gone. Before that, everybody's excited. Friendster, Friendster, you know. Friendster is gone. He knows if he sits out there and does nothing, somebody else will come in. And two guys, WhatsApp was 10 people in a garage. 10 people in a garage built it and sold for 19 billion. Because of something I read in another book called Oversubscribe. If you got something you want to sell, just find two people who are very hungry, very interested in it, and who have got money. That's all. You don't have to find 1,000 customers. They'll outbeat each other. This is what WhatsApp got. But why? They were both fighting because Facebook and Google were both outbidding each other. They bought it. Monetary model is still not there yet. You see, there are all these things about being relevant, the oversub big, you know, oversubscribe, the new subscription economy. Uh, these, are, these are all new things, you know. The automatic, there, there are lots of new ways to make money. And what I'm going to do is, because once I start, because I do a lot of these one-hour lectures on, you know, branding, this and that, I, I, my big problem is I don't know how to keep quiet. Okay. So what I'm going to do is, <laughs> I'm going to do Roshan's job for him. Stop talking, yeah. okay? And uh, leave it to you guys. Well, well, well thank you so much. That was a... a, a Th thanks so much for that, that conversation.